land is your land, and this land is my land, from the California to the New York Island, from the Redwood Forest to the Gulf Stream waters, this land was made for you and me. So uh, Arizona tax, taxes and tax giveaways. The first slide I wanted to kind of share with you and help you understand is where does Arizona's revenue, where do their revenues come from for the state? And there's a couple of major areas. The two, of course, the two biggest ones are our sales and use tax uh, at $4.5 billion, our individual income tax at about $4 billion, and then the corporate income tax has been a shrinking piece of this pie. Right now, uh, this past fiscal year, it was about $500 million. And then other things that come into the revenues, mostly as like fees, right, vehicle license fees, things like that, about $1.1 billion. So <clears throat> notice, go ahead and uh, next slide. Notice what's missing. There's no state revenue from property tax, right? That was taken away like 1997, I think, something like that. And so your property taxes, you know, fund your local city, counties, the school formula. So there's a formula to fund your schools, but those, uh, your property taxes are capped at what's the QTR, or what's called the QTR, or the um, qualified tax rate. So if you live in a very wealthy school district and your taxes pay for your school district, you don't have to pay more than that, right? And, and we've been discussing, well, Public education is responsible of the entire state. So if you live in a wealthy district, why can't your tax dollars then spill over and help the remaining counties who don't have that value meet their children's needs? So that's an idea that we've been tossing around. Quite a lot of opposition on the other side of the aisle, as you'll, as you'll imagine. Uh, go ahead, next slide. So this, this is a complicated slide, and I really, I really wanted to talk about it, even though it's complicated, because it's powerful. So our constitution, the Constitution of the state of Arizona says that we can, there's a spending limit. There's a spending limit on, his, on the, the money the government, the state government can spend. And that limit is 7.41% of the state personal income. Okay, so if you look at this back in 1990, it looks like that says 94 and all the way to the right, 2016, and the last one is an average over this period of time. This is what we have been spending as a percentage of the state personal income. So we must be below 7.41. We have been somewhere around five at the maximum, as low as less than th uh, three and a half-ish, or just about three and a half-ish. Our last one, 3.4. So um, the, the, uh, the budget for FY16 was $9.18 billion, right? If we had spent that average value of 4.2%, the budget would have been $11.18 billion. That's two, go ahead and give the next slide, that's $2 billion more to have, we could have spent if we were collecting that. We constitutionally could have spent $2 billion more, yet we weren't collecting it. So imagine what we could do with $2 billion. Give our teachers a, a, the raise they deserve. Get the computers in the classrooms that our students need. Fix the leaky roofs. There's a lot we could do with that $2 billion. So let's talk about how we could collect that $2 billion, why we aren't at that level, spending level, because of some of the, go ahead, go forward, because of some of the tax cuts that have been implemented in uh, the past decade or, or so. So Arizona has cut some form of taxes in 27 of the last 28 years. I'm, I'm sure most people have heard that already. It's kind of astounding, but it's true. 2003 was the one year that that was an exception. There was no tax cut implemented then. Remember, I want to highlight, these tax cuts occurred through the recession. And our school's budgets were cut through the recession. So these cuts were, these tax cuts and giveaways were carried on the backs of our schools. So it's time to give our schools the break they need and give them the resources they need and start looking for other people to carry the burden to pay for our public education uh, mandates. Um, exactly, thank you. I'm sure you guys have probably heard this last line, but the value of these cuts over the past 28 years, when adjusted for inflation and population growth, would be about $4 billion a year. We could be collecting, if we hadn't done all these cuts in the last 27 years, 
we've been collecting $4 billion more in our general fund to pay for repairing schools, building new schools, making sure we have um, uh, excellent teachers and offering excellent education, fixing our roads, providing health care, all these things. We could, be, we could have the luxury of thinking up new programs that Pam and I and other representatives have been doing. We're putting forth ideas to create new programs to support our teachers, but they can't be funded because we don't have any money. And this is, this is why we don't, and this is how much we could have had. Um, uh, some of those cuts were, as we mentioned, the uh, elimination of the property tax in 1997. We talked about how it's a, a formula now and funds our schools and it's capped at the QTR. There was a substantial reduction in individual income tax rates in 2005. Uh, and again, the most glaring issue was the uh, phased in corporate t income tax rates. We are now at 4.9%. We started at 6.698 or something like that. We've dropped about 2.1%. And I'll show you some more figures um, of that down the road. Go ahead and go forward. Uh, okay. Uh, ways that revenues can be cut. They can be cut uh, through income tax rate reductions, either individual or corporate. Most recently, we did the corporate uh, reduction that was phased in over four years or so. Um, we tried to freeze that last phase in so it didn't occur, but that bill was not heard and not moved through the process. Uh, TPT exemptions. TPT is sales tax in Arizona. TPT stands for transaction privilege tax. It's actually taxing the seller, not the buyer. And then that cost, of course, is passed on to the buyer. Tax credits, another way that revenues can be uh, cut, and tax deductions. And we'll talk about each one. So I think you can go forward again. All right. So this is our corporate tax income tax rate reductions that were enacted. In 2012, the rate was 6.968. And under Governor Brewer and that legislature, they enacted a five-year, four-year phase-in of a reduction down to 4.90, which is a, about a 2.07 reduction percent. And uh, that was phased in even in the face of cutting schools further, even in the face of falling um, revenues, uh, we were still giving these giveaways and tax breaks to corporations under the guise of bringing them to Arizona, and we, we know that doesn't work. I mean, just look at Kansas, right? And one of the things I say is, look, if you want corporations to come to Arizona, make Arizona a great place to live where working people want to live, and then the corporations will follow, the businesses will follow. So if we're gonna be giving out benefits, we need to be benefiting, benefiting the people, because that's what government's about working for the people. Next slide, I think I'll give you a little bit more. So uh, uh, this 2.07 cut, that's a 30% cut in corporate income tax rates, 30% cut over that four or five year period. Go ahead. Um, so um, this is a graph of the money that was lost from the corporate tax reductions, corporate income tax reductions, as you can see, is 2007. We were collecting about a billion dollars in revenue from corporate income tax uh, collections. The recession hit, and that, that initial negative slope, that initial decline was from the recession. Um, there, is a, there was a little bit of a recovery there in the economy, and uh, so the number went back up to around 600 million, and now from 16 onward, and those last numbers are projected numbers, um, we're seeing that negative slope again, and that's from the phased in corporate tax cuts, income, income, rate, uh, income tax cuts. That's what that last, slope, negative slope line is, is from those phased in reductions. So I think the next slide will have some numbers on it. Oh no, okay, so I thought I put some numbers there. Go back one. So as you can see, that was about a billion dollars, and then that in, in 2020, uh, we're projected to be at about $300 million. So that's $700 million loss of revenue. Loss of revenue that we could be spending on our citizens, public education, healthcare, infrastructure. Okay, the next slide. Um, not all, now, now, because of the income tax cuts, uh, corporate income tax cuts, as well as the tax exemptions and tax credits and TPT exemptions and things, we've had slowed revenue growth, okay, in this state. So looking at 2007, Arizona's revenue was about $10 billion, and here we are in 2018, and it's about the same, right? That's with the population growth, that's with economic growth, but it's about the same, and that's because of the tax cuts, tax giveaways, right? 
as you hear, as you see here, there was a, an increase from like 2010 to 2012, and that was the temporary one cent sales tax that our governor as treasurer fought to defeat when it went to the voters to make permanent, and it failed, right? It was temporary, there was a, a, a ballot initiative to make it permanent, and our governor at the time was treasurer, and he really put, he fought on the campaign to, to have that fail, and it did. Uh, so our revenues have been flat for several years. As you can see, I think I have some numbers on the next slide. I do, finally, put some numbers up there. 9.62 billion in 2007, we're at 9.66 billion, so just about the same thing 10 years later in the face of population growth, in the face of some economic growth. So giving these corporate tax cuts and giveaways isn't working. But if we make Arizona a great place to live, I think we're gonna see the benefits of that. All right, and in order to make Arizona a great place to live, we gotta provide services and we gotta have revenue. We have to be responsible stewards of our revenue just as you are responsible stewards of your revenue so you can pay your mortgage, your rent, your utilities. We have not been responsible. Let's go to the next slide here. Um, let's see. Okay, so what, uh, what is a, a sales tax or transaction privilege tax? As I said in Arizona, it's a little different. It's a tax on the seller. The seller then passes that on to the buyer. Um, that is then, you know, it's, it's pretty, much, pretty much a sales tax. Um, it's collected by ADOR, Arizona Department of Revenue, for the state, the states, counties, and cities. So actually the cities and counties have to pay ADOR for that collection. So they, they, they have to pay for the fact that the state is collecting for them. And of course it passes on to the consumer. The Arizona TBT rate is 5.6%. And then the counties and cities add on top of this another half percent or 0.6 percent or whatever the, the each city and county decides. All 15 counties do add a tax on. Um, um, there are hundreds and hundreds of TPT exemptions on the books. Some of them are probably on that banner that was rolled out for you, right? Um, TPT exemptions. You know, Steve Farley always talks about four-inch pipe, right? Yeah. Six-inch pipe is tax. Four-inch pipe is not. Well, that's because some lobbyist that was representing somebody who uses lots of four-inch pipe somehow at some point got that accepted. And it's never been removed, right? We need to look at these things, and this is something that Steve talks about a lot. We talk about it at the legislature. Let's look at these things. Take away the ones that are costing us a lot of revenue. Take away the ones that don't make sense anymore. You have to reevaluate, right? You can't always do the same thing for decades without reevaluating and making sure it still makes sense. Some of the, uh, just a few that we recently passed, and Pam is probably gonna talk about some of these on her part, is um, that's why I think you see some of these things up here, uh, a tax exemption on jet fuel. So if you're rich and you own a jet and you buy fuel for it, you don't have to pay sales tax. Um, tax on fine art. If you buy uh, uh, something um, at the Walmart to hang on your walls, it's taxed. If you buy something at a Scottsdale art store, it's not. Um, jet timeshares. If you don't want to own the whole jet yourself, but want to buy half a jet with someone else, not taxed. Uh, jet storage. Well, one that we just passed was we the coal coal used to be uh, uh, used to be taxed. We repealed the sales tax for coal. Just this session. Just this session. So um, it, it, you know some of our thoughts and, and processes are a little bit flawed. We we have to move, and the idea behind that was to make the Navajo generating station a little bit more attractive for someone to buy, but we we have to be divorcing ourselves from coal energy and moving into the 21st century before we get through the 21st century. Right? So. And Dr. Fraze, we're not shopping at Walmart at all. Nobody does. Oh, excuse me. Thank you for saying that. Thank you for saying that. I meant to say CVS. I, I apologize. I did mean to say CVS. Um, um, okay, sometimes TPT exemptions sound good, but really aren't. And Pam is going to also get into this. And what I mean by at least right now is when we haven't good we haven't been good revenue uh, stewards of our revenue. So if you want to start talking about, I think I put up there a brief example. Go ahead forward. Uh, yeah, if you want to start talking about giving people a break on taxing diapers. Well, let's get to a point where we have good revenues, right? Because think about taking a tax break on a diaper. That saves about $11 a month for a family. But that is over $10 million a year for the state. When we can fund TANF for another two years, 
We can fund childcare subsidies so people can go to work and have their child in a safe place. So these things might be a good idea if we had better revenue streams and we were more responsible with them. So incomes, but there are things that charitable deductions that you gave, any medical here in Arizona, medical costs, every dollar you spend, I hope you know this, every dollar you spend on your medical care every year can be dedu deducted. Right? Federal different. Federal, you have to meet some sort of amount, $10,000 or something, but every dollar in Arizona can be deducted from your state income tax. And basically that reduces your taxable income so that you pay taxes on that lower value. Tax credits are dollar for dollar reduction in your tax burden. So if I get a, uh, uh, if I have a $400 tax bill, right, I do my taxes, I make X amount of money, and I do my deductions and my exemptions, and my, ta and my, my um, annual income is X, and on X I must pay $400, and I have a tax credit for $400, how much tax do I pay the state? Zero. 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 Right. So remember, these tax credits are happening on the individual level, which adds up, right, to a lot of money. Um, one of the things that we use tax credits for are the charitable tax credits, right? They sound really good. Like, why not let you give $400 to um, the Casa de los Niños to buy, to buy um, so that people can get clothes? Well, that's a good idea. But think about what the government can do, and there, but there's no real oversight on that. And think about what the state could do if they had hundreds of billions of dollars, they could create a grant and Casa de los Niños could apply for that grant. And they could get hundreds of, they could get millions of dollars through the grant process, and if they do a good job and provide that service, they can renew that grant year over year over year. If, we, if somebody gets a grant and they're doing a terrible job, that grant goes away. So think about that. You give $400, you don't know how well of a job that person's doing you give that $400 to, right? And if we had some review or some way to, 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 to allow that per, to tell that group you can't get that anymore because you're not providing the service you should be providing. And if we had more money for the, the government to provide those services or the government to, to pick out people to do that, we would, uh, we probably would have a better amount of services provided. Um, uh, and also, remember, uh, corporate, tax, corporate tax credits happen, and they roll them over, right? If a corporation has $300 million in tax credits and their tax bill is $150 million, they have $150 million of tax credits they roll over and use next year or the year after that. In fact, right now in Arizona, there's $1 billion of tax credits hanging over our heads. It's like a margin call on the stock market, if you understand what that means, right? A billion dollars could be claimed at any year and we'd be in trouble. Now, if you talk to the economists, they say that's very unlikely, but it's not impossible. And that's the frightening piece. One minute left, okay, and go ahead. I thought I had 20. Oh, okay, go ahead, quickly, uh, tax exemptions. Um, uh, we, we recently increased that $50 a year, the personal tax exemption. Go ahead to the next one. Um, uh, let's see, tax credits, right? STOs are terrible tax credits. They take public money and put them at private schools. Next, uh, revenue cuts. That means we have less, uh, less to invest, less services provided, and more debt. We have debt to our public schools. So next, I think I'm almost done. Remember, we can pass a tax credit deduction exemption with simple majority. But in order to repeal it, we need two thirds. So it's very difficult to repeal. And the last one, real quickly, Prop 301, with what we did this year, thank God we did it. It was not a renewal. It was a, a reauthorization. Everything about it after it expires becomes uh, eligible for the, the legislature to tinker with, with a simple majority. Right, the voter protection of 301 is gone once it expires in 2021. And that's it. This land is your land, and this land is my land, from the California to the New York Island, from the Redwood Forest to the Gulf Stream waters. This land was made for you and me. As I went a walk in that ribbon of highway, I saw above me that endless skyway. Saw below me that golden valley This land was made for you and me I 
roamed and rambled and I followed my footsteps to the sparkling sands of her diamond deserts. All around me a voice was sounding, this land was made for you and me.